Welcome back. Now let's learn about mRNA delivery vehicles. Although many different types of mRNA delivery vehicles are being tested, the most commonly used to date are lipid nanoparticles, or LMPs. Let's dig into the anatomy of an LMP and the function of each component. Please take a moment to review the learning objectives for this lesson. Let's watch a video to learn more about lipid nanoparticles. Here is a lipid nanoparticle, or LMP. Inside, we have our cargo, the mRNA. The rest of the LMP is made of lipids, a form of fat. Lipids form the membranes surrounding all the cells in your body. They are greasy or hydrophobic molecules, meaning that they don't mix well with water. Instead, they naturally form lipid bilayers, like cell membranes, or spheres. So LMPs are essentially just really tiny fat balls. How do we make sure the mRNA ends up inside the fat ball? In module one, we learn that mRNA is highly negatively charged from the phosphates in its sugar phosphate backbone. Because opposite charges attract, one way to get a lipid to stick to mRNA is to make it always positively charged. However, lipids that are always positively charged are not well tolerated by the body. To overcome this challenge, researchers used a clever engineering trick to develop ionizable lipids. These lipids are positively charged under some conditions, but not others. These lipids will coat mRNA under acidic conditions, but then switch back to being uncharged under our physiological conditions near neutral pH. Cool, huh? The attraction between mRNA and the ionizable lipids works to make sure they wrap around their cargo, but it isn't strong enough to be stable in a vial or to survive long in the body. Another layer of packaging is needed for strength. This is composed of a double layer of a different type of lipid, a phospholipid, with cholesterol interspersed. Both the phospholipid bilayer and cholesterol are important components of your own cell membranes. In this cryo-electron microscope image of mRNA LMPs, you can clearly see the dark interior containing the mRNA and ionizable lipid, as well as the lipid bilayer membrane surrounding this core. Each LMP contains between four and six mRNA molecules. For cells to efficiently absorb them, LMPs need to be within a certain size range. The typical diameter of an mRNA LMP is around 80 to 100 nanometers. That's one one-thousandth the width of a human hair. They're so tiny that each dose of an mRNA vaccine contains trillions of individual LMPs. But LMPs are soft materials. If they were allowed to touch one another while in storage, they would fuse together, making bigger and bigger fat balls as time goes by. So we have one final layer of packaging to prevent the LMPs from fusing with one another while they're in the vial. This layer is something called a surfactant. The most common surfactant currently in use is polyethylene glycol, or PEG for short. PEG is found in many other FDA-approved medicines, as well as over-the-counter products like cosmetics and toothpaste. When the PEG-coated LMPs bump into one another, the PEG keeps the lipid bilayers from touching, thereby preventing fusion. Once the mRNAs have been appropriately packaged to keep them stable during storage, they need to get to the right place in the body upon injection. You've probably heard of HDL and LDL. These are both examples of lipid transport complexes. They ferry fats from one place to another in our bloodstream. To the human body, LMPs look very much like lipid transport complexes. Different lipid transport complexes have affinity for specific tissues and cell types. Similarly, LMPs can be engineered to have affinity for particular tissues and cell types. Once the LMP has reached the target cell, how does the mRNA get inside? Cells take up LMPs by a process called endocytosis. This is how cells ingest materials, such as lipid transport complexes, from the environment around them. 
the cell membrane engulfs the material then buds inwardly to create a special membrane bound compartment called an endosome the final step in mrna delivery is for the lmp to fuse with the endosomal membrane and release the mrna into the cytoplasm where it can interact with ribosomes and be translated into protein once the mrna is released what happens to the lipids the phospholipids and cholesterol are normal parts of your own cell membranes so are metabolized like any other lipids in your body but don't worry the amount of cholesterol administered in an mrna medicine is minuscule compared to what's already in the human body so taking an mrna vaccine or therapeutic has no effect on overall cholesterol levels once in the body the ionizable lipids and polyethylene glycol have been engineered to break down into smaller fragments that are rapidly eliminated by normal metabolic processes all of these fragments are gone within a few days now that we have an appreciation for how mrna medicines overcome barriers to delivery we're next going to learn about another set of barriers that had to be overcome the innate immune sentinels <laughs>